Programming is hard. Whether you're an experienced developer or newly coming up, programming can be one of the most tedious things to learn. Welcome back to another SC Programs video guys. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the best ways to learn programming in 2024 coming into 2025. In this video, I'm gonna go over all the different things that helped me learn many different languages such as C++, Python, and C Sharp. So starting off in the first place, we have communities. Communities are some of the best ways to learn because you have people who help you and can understand errors and can just give you feedback. And more often than not, you actually meet a lot of friends who kind of encourage you to keep learning. So it's kind of like a accountability group, you know? And personally, I'm gonna have to recommend my Discord for this. I've recently just made a Discord where you guys can join for free, it costs no money, and you can meet other people who are learning languages, um, find help for your problems, work on projects with other people. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So this is definitely my first pick on one of the best ways to learn programming. Moving on, I recommend watching YouTube videos, you know, um, I'm not trying to recommend myself here, but I publish lots of YouTube videos. There's also other YouTubers who publish like tutorials and stuff. This is a really good way to learn because it shows you how to build a project from start to finish, you know, although it may not be what you're trying to make in your head, like your dream project, it does show you how to build something, right? You will find yourself like calling upon these skills in the future so, so much. And coming on to number three, this is kind of like a controversial one but i definitely recommend using ai you know something like ChatGPT is so useful and i don't think people understand the value of it you know before ChatGPT, if you wanted something like debugged you needed help with an error you get a bunch of random people who are probably just a bunch of assholes being like uh oh, fuck you you should you should read the 1999 paper documentation for python um that, that was kind of a personal experience but yeah so okay moving on to number four this kind of relates to number one but try and find like friends, you know, people, people you're working with, because more often than not, they'll help you. Um, you know, a lot of people hate the idea of paces, which are just people who, like pace code. So they're not going to like spoon feed you the answer. Expect to do a bit of work, but like they definitely, definitely, definitely will help you. And they'll keep you accountable to learning, you know, like if you go to some friends and you're all interested in programming, you are like, hey, let's try and make this project. No one, like you, you guys got to understand, no one goes into a project just making it like, like done, right? Everyone has issues, everyone has things they don't know how to solve, everyone has problems. So by having people you can work with, they help you solve those problems. Don't think it's like weird to start a project and have like problems, you know? Cause that, that, that's a part of like every development process. Okay, moving on to number five. This is kind of important, but documentation. I know I was kind of shitting on it earlier. If you, if you use a library like, um, I don't know, say the request library, fucking video favorite here. But if you use that, it's so important to read the documentation because if you just go in blindly, you're not gonna know like, you're not gonna know what to do, you know? And sure you can watch tutorials and stuff. Um, that, that is another option, but I really do think reading the documentation is the best. It will normally have like getting started, like a getting started section. If you just read that, you'll know how to get started. Like, I don't think that clicks in enough people's brains but it is definitely, definitely, definitely worth doing. And a lot of the errors, right? If you get an error, the documentation generally has a solution, you know? I know some, some documentation shit, and sometimes you run into errors where you're just looking at it like, what the fuck is this? This, this, this doesn't even make sense. But more often than not, the documentation is your friend, and you should definitely look at it when trying to learn. Okay, number six is Stacked Overflow. Now, I guess this does come in number one again, like communities, but Stacked Overflow is so good. You know, you paste a problem in there and nine times out of 10, someone else has had the same problem as you. It's not uncommon to have an issue, like I said, and people here discuss, you know, you get quick responses. If you just say someone doesn't have your problem, if you put yours like on there, people will help you quickly. They're not assholes about it generally, unless you're like, Unless you're obviously doing something malicious or something where they, do, where they wouldn't want to help you, you will get an answer. It's really good. And yeah, I highly recommend it, you know. 